Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about a few things that's going on on social media, a few viral stories. So if you guys do not know, news broke earlier today that LeBron James' oldest son, Bronny James, suffered cardiac arrest. So this entire situation is extremely frightening, and there's also been an update to the case, which is just extremely sad. So right now, they're saying that LeBron James is scared and devastated following his son Bronny's cardiac arrest during his USC practice. The 18-year-old basketball protege was rushed to the hospital and admitted to ICU after collapsing at USC's Galen Center on Monday. His family confirmed today. LeBron is making sure he gets the best care possible and has entered full dad mode and is protecting his son in any way he can. Cardiologists have warned that Bronny's career, which was only beginning following his high school graduation, could already be over. Dr. Christopher Tannion told the Daily Mail if they find something that puts him at high risk for sudden death, then that may make or break his career. The NY-based sports cardiologist said that a large portion of cardiac arrest cases in athletes are caused by a condition known as hypertropic cardiomyopathy. Sorry, I can't pronounce all these words that had to do with the heart, which predisposes the heart to abnormal rhythms. He said if this is found to be the case, then Bronny's career could be on the line because this puts him at high risk for sudden death. So this entire situation is extremely disheartening. And I was just simply just heartbroken when I first heard this this morning. I was in shock because, again, if you guys know me, I'm a big fan of Bronny. I'm always on his page commenting. My kids clown me like, can you get out of his comment section? It's so weird to, because I'm like, you know, my kids follow him too. And they're like, all we see is our mom, you know, commenting and calling him Bronald and stuff. But, you know, I've watched these kids grow up just like my kids, you know. Uh, when he came here to Minneapolis to play against Minnehaha, we were right there in the stands. Um and he's overall, he's a good kid. You don't never hear anything crazy about Bronny or even Bryce, you know. They just play basketball. And a lot of us here are sports moms. You know, we have boys who are in basketball, football, you know, hockey, soccer, things like that. And it's scary because it's like, you know, these kids train so hard. And I've noticed, like, they don't get breaks anymore, before, like, basketball season would literally be from, like, November till about February. And now now after basketball season with the school, they also had basketball with rec, then AAU, and then you have summer leagues. Like, these kids are literally playing sports all year round. Before it was just certain seasons, but now that they're making, you know, these camps and these sports all year round, I just feel like it is putting a lot of stress on a lot of these young athletes, you know? And I can only imagine the pressure Bronny is under because they're literally trying to turn him into his father. They want him to, like, you know, they want LeBron to pass Bronny the reins. And the thing is, LeBron is an anomaly. Let's keep that real. Like, LeBron, where LeBron was at at 18 versus where Bronny is at at 18, two totally different levels. And I feel like they've put a lot of pressure on this young man's shoulders and maybe it's making him to where he feels like he has to work out all the time and practice all the time so he can be just as good as his father. And so to have him have this heart scare is extremely scary. And thank goodness they were on it because he could have really died right there on the court. Anytime you go into cardiac arrest, you only have moments, you know, to save somebody. We all remember what happened with DeMar Hamlin. He literally almost died on the football field, you know, thank God he was saved, but it's really scary all the things that's going on. And then a few years ago, Shaquille O'Neal's son, um, Sharif, if you guys remember, he was going through a routine physical and they ended up finding that he had some heart issues. He had an underlying heart issue that required him getting heart surgery at the age of 18. And 
Shani O'Neill said several times that if they wouldn't have found this while doing the, you know, the checkup, he could have died, you know. And so it's been a long road to recovery for him. He was on his way to the NBA as well. Right now he is playing in the G League and he's doing pretty well. But it's very scary that things like this happened. And I do feel like we put a lot of stress on a lot of young kids, not just, you know, sports stars, but entertainers. You know, we've had... You guys have all seen the headlines with some of the K-pop kids who end up passing out because they're just pushed to exhaustion to get the steps right and to keep going and to keep going. And at the end of the day, we're human beings. We're not machines. And, you know, you have to listen to your body. And if this ends up breaking his career where he can't play, I think that they should choose his health first. As much as we've all been cheering because we want to see LeBron James and Bronny play together in the NBA. I've been saying this for like the past five years. That's the goal, to see father and son play. And with this horrible situation, um, it's not worth it. I think, you know, God willing, he can be okay and eventually play basketball again. But will he be ever able to get back to NBA-ready level? I don't know. But I also feel like at the end of the day, his health is far more important. This is not a young man from a struggling family. This is not a young man who has to take his family out the projects. This is a young man who was raised with money, prestige. No matter what Bronny decides to do in life, he'll be okay. You know, so I feel like why risk it? Whereas, you know, if this was Bronny who came from a poor family... I can see how this could be devastating for the family who's putting all their chips in on this one kid. They're putting all their eggs in one basket. But that's not necessarily his situation. So he is blessed in that aspect that he doesn't have, you know, the financial pressure of his family weighing on him. But either way, it's just really, really sad. You know, and for people saying, you know, it's it's who cares? You know, it's just basketball. Like, please stop. You know, just because you're not into sports, that's on you. But these kids, literally from the time they are in third grade, they are putting their blood, sweat, tears, everything into these games, into these sports. You know, they're putting their bodies at risk. You know, these kids playing football, they're putting their brains and all that stuff at risk, you know, for a shot at a scholarship, for a shot of getting out the hood, for a shot of, you know, the trophy. And again, I love sports because it keeps kids out of trouble. It keeps them grounded. It teaches them teamwork, you know, so there's a lot of benefits. But it is very, very sad, you know. But fortunately for Bronny, again, he comes from a well-to-do family, so he'll be okay. But things like this happen all the time to just regular people, you know, and people need to be aware of this. There's been all types of stories of kids out on the football field or playing basketball, and they just die in the gym, you know, and this is why we have to listen to our bodies because sports can have a negative effect, especially if you're working out so much and you're not giving a chance for your body to have a break. You know, we push this gym culture and working out 24-7. No, you're not supposed to work out 24-7. I don't care what these gym influencers tell you. You're supposed to give your body a break. You're supposed to give your body time to recover but I fear that sometimes these boys are pushed and pushed and pushed to give their all and to win the game and to, you know, be big and strong. And they're taking these vitamins, they're taking the, these supplements and these energy boosters, and it can be a deadly mix for the heart. Tonight, the family of an NFL player says that the public's compassion means the world to them. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed after making a tackle during last night's game. The team says the 24-year-old suffered cardiac arrest. Hamlin is in critical condition right now. His family says he is receiving exceptional care. Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death in young athletes. New at 6, WCCO's Alan Henry spoke to the family of a teenage hockey player who died on the ice about how parents can reduce the risk. Mike Schoonover says his phone started to light up last night, minutes after DeMar Hamlin was injured. What he saw was a painfully familiar sight. It brought us back to when our son went down, uh, you know, back in November of 2014 with his teammates watching, with people in attendance watching and that type of thing. So it was, um, it was heartbreaking to see 
14-year-old Patrick Schoonover had just scored a goal during his hockey game when he suddenly collapsed on the ice. The interpretation when Patrick went down is, is that he had a neck or a head injury. Patrick died that day from sudden cardiac arrest. The Schoonovers say the only clue was Patrick's high blood pressure at his most recent doctor's appointments. We did not know that he had uh, two heart conditions and so our family made it our mission to make sure that uh, we reduce as many kids as possible from dying from sudden cardiac arrest. Since August of 2015, the Patrick Schoonover Foundation has screened more than 4,000 students, finding hundreds with high blood pressure or heart defects and have donated 15 defibrillators to schools. You only have three minutes to save somebody's life or save their brain function by beginning the CPR. So it's really important that people be aware of it. And even if you know how to do it, to practice it. The foundation is also pushing for heart screens to become part of physicals for all young people, since heart disease remains the number one killer of Americans. Kids are still dying from sudden cardiac arrest, so let's fix it. Alan Henry, WCCO, 4 News. It can be a lot of stress, so I'm just glad that he's out of ICU. I'm definitely praying for his recovery, but the whole thing is just, it's really sad. It's really sad. I was not expecting this news when I woke up this morning, and it just goes to show you that, you know, health is wealth, and life is short, and when it's all said and done, if you don't have your health, if you don't have your body fully functioning, you have nothing. You're nothing without your health. So many times we put money and fame and prestige on a pedestal, but that health should be number one. Without that, none of the other stuff can line up. So the whole situation is sad. But once again, I definitely wish him a speedy recovery. So now another story that's going viral on social media is of this young actress, um, former Nickelodeon star Genovini Samuels. Um, she done got on social media and she's breaking down crying about how, you know, she's not getting her residuals. You know, she can't afford to keep her child in private school. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this video. I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. I need y'all to understand that not all child stars are rich. Not all of us are balling. The leads of the cast, they get the big money checks. The supporting cast, like myself, we don't get that. That's why we're striking, okay? I'm asking for a livable wage. I'm asking for health insurance. You have no idea how hard it is. We just came out of COVID and now we're going into a strike. I use my 401k, my nest egg, my savings to survive COVID. I don't know what money y'all think I have. Or I, I, I'm, I'm saving up something. No, 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 no. Okay. Between family members stealing from me or doing a show where they didn't pay me or now I'm fighting for residuals. Because executives don't want to give me a dime. I am asking for a livable wage. I'm asking for health insurance. I got responsibilities and things that I got to take care of. We got back to school coming. I got to put my son in a private school. Private? Oh, you ain't got to do that. You can put him in public school. I can't put him in public school. Because when I did, they was picking on him because of me. The parents were jealous because I was on TV and famous. And they told them, their kids to pick on my kid. So I had to take him out and put him in a decent school. I'm tired. I don't own a home. I barely own my car. I don't know what money I think I have, but I don't. I have a job. I got two. So don't sit there and go, oh, well, why don't you just go get a job? I got a job. I got a job. I don't make enough money to qualify for SAG health insurance. But I make too much money to qualify for assistance, but not enough money to to pay for whatever procedures I need in pocket. I 
This is why I strike. All right, so you guys just heard what she had to say. So this is causing a bit of controversy. While some people feel bad for her and are siding with her, other people are like, sis, welcome to the real world. You know, we're all going through it. Everybody's struggling right now. Um, I didn't like the part about the son having to be in private school. Your son doesn't have to be in private school. There's a lot of parents who would wish to put their kids in private school, but economically they can't afford it. I don't believe that kids are bullying her son because she's a famous actress. I don't know. I just don't consider her like a big A-lister for her child to be picked on. Um, while I do sympathize with her, these are things I've been saying for years. These are things we talked about on this channel. There has been enough actors who have come out, former child actors, and said that it gets so hard as an adult actor. They're not able to get roles. And now with the residuals being dwindled because of streaming services, it's even harder. Everybody has to have multiple hustles. I don't care if you're an actor, if you're an influencer, everyone has to have multiple hustles, work multiple jobs. It's sad, but that's the world that we're living in right now. And she says she has two jobs. Obviously, those two jobs are not enough. But sometimes you have to make decisions. You know what I'm saying? downsizing, taking your child out of private school, possibly leaving the state of California. You know, even though you love acting and that's your passion, that's what you want to do, if it comes to where I'm going to be broke and homeless and have nothing coming in, we're leaving Cali, you know. But it's really sad because, again, like I've said before, only 2% of Hollywood is really living this life. And I think the problem is that Hollywood built this facade, you know, that regular people look up to. So a lot of people assume that Hollywood is the rich and famous, the people in these $100,000 gowns, wearing $2,000 shoes, walking the red carpet, when that is not a majority of Hollywood. And a lot of people in Hollywood stood by and allowed this fake persona to persist because they too were hoping that one day they'd be wearing these outfits on the red carpet. And now we're seeing behind the curtains, and the behind the curtains, it's, it's not a good look. A lot of folks are really struggling. And people also forget that Hollywood is also ran on nepotism. A lot of these people getting chances to be executive producers and producers and to be able to get credits where they can get residuals, a lot of them are nepotism babies. People don't want to talk about that. When you think about Nicolas Cage, what do you think of? Great acting, bad acting, unexplainable chaotic genius? Well, I think about all that, but also that his name isn't really Nicolas Cage. His real name is Nicolas Coppola, and yes, from the famous Coppola family. You see, Nicolas Cage's father, August, is the brother of Francis Ford Coppola, making Nicolas Cage the nephew of the famous director. And in case you didn't know, Francis Coppola is the director of the Godfather movies, the first of which is often referred to as the best movie ever made, or at least it's always somewhere on that short list. Other famous family members of the Coppola dynasty include director Sofia Coppola, actress Talia Shire, and actor-musician Jason Swartzman, who by the way was in the band Phantom Planet that sang the opening theme to the OC. Yeah. Before I digress any longer, my point is there's a lot of nepotism in Hollywood, and like with any business, it stays in the family. I feel like in general we're all aware of nepotism babies to some degree. Like I know Lily Rose Depp is the daughter of Johnny Depp and Amber Rose. Like that that that, that feels that feels common knowledge. Or that Maude Apatow is the daughter of Judd Apatow. It's the type of information that you read and just never want to ever pursue anything ever again, ever. So trigger warning for just hopelessness. <laughs> These guys are so young, they're my age. So yes, it's jealousy. But they came out on TikTok from how I knew them, and now they're big like on SNL. Come to find out, Martin here is the son of an SNL producer, and John Higgins is the son of Mr. Steve Higgins. Hey, I need some more sandwiches. Oh no, it's James. 
because of course, how would you get on SNL in such like a key role? But the thing is, Lily Collins is a Nepo baby? Oh my god, is this a famous one that I didn't know about? Season one and season two, Emily was coming into herself. She was oh here. My she was going to show everyone what oh she was Oh my god, that's Phil Collins' of. daughter. And what? Now Even one of the most popular shows that we spent, you know, these past few seasons watching, Euphoria. Most of those kids on Euphoria are all nepotism babies. You know, so this is where a lot of these roles are going. Executive producer roles, producer roles, acting roles, lead acting roles. They're going to nepotism babies. And a lot of just regular people who don't have a connection or a hookup or a cousin or a mom and dad in Hollywood, they're suffering. They're, they're not able to get in and get these residuals and get the help that they need. So the whole situation is sad, but it's a lot of people going through this. It's not just her. But again, like I stated in my video that I broke down the other day about SAG Afra, when a lot of regular people were saying, hey, my job is being taken by AI or, hey, they've cut down our hours. You know, we're going through stuff here at my nine to five. Hollywood was quiet. Hollywood wasn't, you know, standing behind the average man and woman. But now they want the average man and woman who's also struggling and going through it to stand behind them. And I'm not just saying this young woman, but that's just the, the attitude that I've been seeing with some people on social media. Not her necessarily, but I've seen some people who feel like they shouldn't really have to work and go get another nine to five job. I'm a trained actor. I want to be an actor. Well, if the jobs aren't there and the residuals aren't there, guess what? You have to go get a waitressing job. You have to go get a nine to five job. Don't let ego, don't let because you don't want to be recognized, you know, cashiering because you were in a movie or you on a TV show. Don't let pride get in the way of affecting how you eat and how you pay your bills. Don't allow that. You know, don't go broke because you're too prideful to go out and go find a job or you're too prideful to go wait tables until your next gig comes in. Because I've just been in on, on a lot of these little acting forums and, you know, I, I get it. You know, hopefully they'll come to some type of resolution. And unfortunately, you're not going to find a lot of sympathy with the general public because, again, the faces of Hollywood, not necessarily this young lady, but many of the A-listers, have sat here on this moral high horse and wagged their finger and talked down to the general public that now the general public is just like, we don't care about y'all strike. We have UPS, you know, they, well, they're not going to strike now because they were able to come up with an agreement. You had that man who was going off about not getting his pension after 30 years of work. Fucking job. It ain't you. It's these motherfuckers right here. It's the motherfuckers on the top. So now we gotta do this shit again. So all I have to say is you do that. I'm gonna pass over this motherfucker. Exactly. I mean, I'm 30-something motherfuckers here. Yeah, I agree too. 30-something motherfuckers here. I agree too. You're telling me I ain't got no motherfucking pension. Yeah, yeah. Nobody tell me to calm my ass down. I agree. Fuck everybody tell me to calm down. You have a lot of things out here that are affecting regular day-to-day -day people. So the empathy is not really gonna be there at this point. It's sad, but it's just not. So with that being said, I want to know what you guys think about both of these stories um, with LeBron James and with uh, Giovanni and what she's going through. Let me know your thoughts on everything. Please leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading them. And thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.